All right, so I just want to hop on real quick and talk about the Lakers because as of late, they've lost their last two games. They've slipped down to third place in the Western Conference. And I just want to look into why this is exactly happening, why exactly they are in a little bit of a mid-season slump right now. And obviously the easy thing is to just say that, you know, it's the Lakers and they're going to be fine in the end. But I think there are actually some good points to pick out of this two-game losing slide that could factor into the team later in the season. Because yes, even though they have lost two in a row, one to the first seeded 76ers and another to the last seeded Pistons, uh, I mean, they're still the best defense in the league. They hold the best defensive rating, the second best opponents per game average, and just overall, they still are looking like the best team in the league. But there are obviously chinks in the armor for every team in the league, and the Lakers definitely have their own things to worry about. So far this season, obviously LeBron and AD have been the one-two punch that they have been their entire time in LA together, but they've also been getting great secondary work from guys like Dennis Schroeder. Kyle Kuzma has been a pretty legit sharpshooter and someone who can grab rebounds and play the four spot pretty well. They've also gotten some great minutes from Taylor Horan Tucker, Alex Caruso. A lot of these bench guys are coming on the court and playing well. It just hasn't been the same over these past five games or so. Digging deeper into these past five games, LeBron is on a very hot streak right now. He's averaging 30 points and he's turned himself into a sharpshooter as that's the new you know meme being thrown around Twitter that LeBron's hitting his fifth prime where he's now turned into a just deadly shooter from beyond the three-point line. I mean he's taking over seven threes a game and shooting it at 53% over his last five games which is just absurd for someone like LeBron. On the other hand though the rest of the roster is lacking and even Anthony Davis hasn't been quite his old self. He's still averaging 23 points and getting 10 rebounds a game but his three-point shooting numbers have dipped down to 18% and just overall he has not been as effective on offense as he has in the past and that's obviously something that you know it might just be a little cold shooting slump but it's something that maybe could potentially worry Lakers fans even though there probably isn't a reason to be worried about it it might just be a cold shooting slump it probably is that moving on the greater concern should be with the rest of this roster in this five game sample size whereas Dennis Schroeder he started off the season very hot, but over these past five games, he's been on a pretty epic cold streak. He's averaging less than 10 points a game, which is very un-Dennis Schroeder-like. He's also shooting 18% from three, while also only shooting 36% from the field in general, and although he had a pretty good game against the Sixers, it was his first in a while. Outside of that, a big reason why this Lakers team was able to maintain the number one spot for so long was the supporting cast and their willingness and ability to hit threes, as all of um, Contavious Caldwell Pope, Kyle Kuzma, Markeith Morris, Alex Caruso, they were all hitting threes at like career high levels. And while a few of them are still maintaining that pace somewhat, a lot of them have fallen off in these past five games. And on a team when you only have really LeBron, AD, and potentially Dennis Schroeder as the only people who can really create their own shot or create shots for others, when the rest of the team isn't hitting those shots, it's just going to make the offense a lot less efficient and overall is going to cause the Lakers to lose games. So again, while this might, it probably is just a little bit of a cold slump. It does show signs that this is something that could happen to the Lakers later on. It's something that we've seen happen to the Lakers in the past. Last season, they had various shooting slumps that made the team look very vulnerable. Then we got the playoffs and those same players, same supporting cast players, were hitting their threes and hitting their shots and it made them look unstoppable. Either way, again, I know it's a very simple thing to point out, but again, it's just like a little bit of a cold slump for the Lakers. Obviously, if they were to match up with the Pistons in the playoffs, they would probably sweep them by a you know average margin of about 20 points a game. And the loss to the Sixers, that one was a little bit more interesting to me because while the Lakers came out of the gate really slow, as they have for most of their games this season, it let the Sixers build up a lead and then eventually the Lakers just were not able to overcome until they really started pressing themselves in the fourth quarter when they almost made that crazy comeback in the last few minutes. But I think the point that was made there is simply just that the Sixers are a really good team. I mean, they're number one in the East for a reason and the Lakers aren't going to be able to coast against every single team. Also, bringing back the little playoff metaphor I used, if the teams were to match up in the playoffs, it'd be the finals obviously since they're East and West, but if they were to match up in a seven game series, obviously the Lakers would probably be favored and they would probably come out on top. But with that being said, it did show that the Lakers are a little bit more vulnerable, 
especially when they're playing against other gifted players like Joel Embiid and a Ben Simmons who's willing to be assertive on the offensive end. I think this game served as a really good reminder, especially to Lakers fans, that when the team isn't playing at its best or is essentially taking a night off, for lack of a better you know, term or phrase, they can be beaten just like any other team in this league. This isn't the same you know, monster house Lakers team that we saw absolutely decimate every single team they faced in the playoffs last season. This is a team who, when their shooters go cold, like any other team in the league, they can be beaten. One thing though that I think could combat this heavily, and again, it's the regular season, so we're seeing a lot of guys on the court in one game for the Lakers, as we're seeing 11 people as a big portion of their rotation getting a good solid amount of minutes. That will definitely tighten up come playoff time. We'll probably see something like eight or nine man rotations rather than the 11 they've been playing so far this season. But two guys who I think need to get more playing time as of now are Alex Caruso and Taylor Horton Tucker. I know there are a lot of Lakers fans out there who share that opinion, and it's for pretty simple reasons. Alex Caruso is one of the better glue guys in the league, no matter how much you don't want to hear it. Alex Caruso is legit. He has fully deserved his minutes coming all the way from the Lakers G League team, and he needs to be on the court at end of games. He needs to be getting minutes throughout every game because it's just so easy to tell that when he's on the court, good things happen for LA. As for Taylor Horton Tucker, he's simply just a great defender and someone who can actually get the ball to the rim from the guard position. And I know Dennis Schroeder came on this season. He's been doing that too. He's been doing a pretty good job of it you know, outside of these past couple of games or so. But it, was, it, it just makes it everything easier for a team when you have multiple guards who can attack the rim. And it's not just LeBron. It's not just AD. But you have other players who can get to the rim and score and just create you know, force rotations and hit the open shooters for open shots. And as for the players who they'd take those minutes from, I think Wesley Matthews is a pretty easy candidate for that one. He, he's a great 3 and D guy, although he's just, he's not quite the same as what he used to. He's serviceable, but at the end of the day, he's only shooting, what is it, 36% from three, which if for someone like Wesley Matthews, you would probably hope that for that to be a little bit higher. And don't, like 36% is fine, but for someone whose only role in the team is to play defense and shoot, you're obviously hoping for something a little better. And then another player who I would be perfectly fine with getting less minutes come playoff time is Montrez Harrell. I still just do not see quite how he fits on this Lakers team. I understand that he's able to come off the bench, provide them with a scoring burst, and just give them some solid minutes, uh, to, you know, fill minutes, and give the starters some rest. But again, just come playoff time, I think we're gonna see exactly what happened last season when he was on the Clippers, where he's just not playable because He's not that great on defense, he's undersized, he can't be on the court with uh, Anthony Davis at the same time, and overall I just don't think he's going to fit into many of the good lineups that the Lakers are going to want to use come playoff time. So again, I just want to reiterate, obviously there's nothing to be worrying about if you're a Lakers fans right now, that is an obvious statement, but I do think that there are definitely issues with this team that need to be solved because again, there's just there's no such thing as a perfect team in the NBA. Biggest thing that needs to happen is Alex Crusoe and Taylor Horton Tucker. They're currently 9 and 10 in terms of minutes per game on the team. That needs to go up. They need to be part of the rotations, just more of them. And yeah, at the same time, the bench can unit just needs to get out of this cold funk. They need to get back to scoring the ball. They need Dennis Schroeder to attack the rim, which is, again, the reason why they need Taylor Horton Tucker to be getting more minutes because this Lakers team is at their best when they don't have to rely on their three-point shooters because as we've seen time and time again, they go cold occasionally and it's left to LeBron and AD to just backpack the team and that's not always gonna work. Because when a team has rim pressure, especially a LeBron team, it just makes his job so much easier. It makes the entire offense run a whole lot smoother and with this Lakers team, we already know that there are, they are a top defense in the league. We've seen it last year, they've continued it this year. They've, had, they've grown a pretty uh, surmountable lead uh, in terms of defensive rating over second and third and fourth place. So again, if they can get the offense cooking, which I think Caruso and THT getting more minutes will definitely aid in that factor, then this Lakers team is going to be very tough to beat. And that'll do it for this video. As always, leave some comments down below on what you think about this Lakers team right now. And uh, outside of that, leave a like if you enjoyed or enjoy this type of content. And as always, most importantly, Thank you for watching.